Hello and welcome to Exclusive with Dakhlit Hussain here on ITV International. Well, uh, tonight we'll be discussing Egypt's cooperation with UNICEF for a better world. Today's children are definitely tomorrow's future because they are the ones holding the future in their little hands. So what we give to them today is definitely our tomorrow. Egypt's constitution has stated an integral set of fundamental rights for the Egyptian child, mainly aiming at achieving the developmental process, the well-being, and also the protection of all the children without any sort of discrimination. And in that respect, Egypt pays great attention to children across the country, including refugees, aiming to maximize the opportunities for them to achieve their developmental potential. The state is accomplishing this through several ways, and one of them is definitely cooperating with the UN various organizations, as UNICEF, whose work in Egypt is focused on promoting sustainable development with the multidimensional equity for children. Also embodying the fair chance for every child in principle and in line of Egypt's priorities. UNICEF's work is mainly focusing on early childhood development and the expected results of UNICEF's work in Egypt are definitely to con contributing to our national efforts and the priorities of our 2030 National Sustainable Development Strategy. On exclusive with Taghrid Hussain uh, tonight, we're really uh, honored to have with us uh, Mr. Jeremy Hopkins, who is uh, UNICEF's uh, representative in Egypt. Thank you so much for coming, sir. Thank you for having me this evening. And uh, it is the first exclusive uh, on Night TV International, but definitely we will see you again on Night TV. Hope so. Thank you so much. And uh, together we'll be uh, talking about uh, UNICEF's work on sustainable development goals in Egypt, UNICEF's initiatives in the country, the outcomes on the ground, UNICEF's achievements, and uh, as UNICEF, he views the great attention Egypt pays to uh, our children who are tomorrow's leaders. Uh, Mr. Hopkins is the current UNICEF representative in Egypt. He graduated with an MA in Arabic and Social Anthropology from Edinburgh and an MSc in Development Studies from Soyuz, the University of London. He started his career in Somalia, and then he moved on to UNICEF, where he worked in Somalia managing programs at the field level of child protection, youth engagement, uh, children affected by human immunodeficiency virus HIV and related behavior change communication. And uh, Mr. Hopkins continued work on child protection also in Mozambique. Thereafter, uh, he worked representative for UNICEF in the Central African Republic, in Yemen and in Somalia again. More recently, Mr. Jeremy was acting as a representative for UNICEF in South Sudan and has completed his tour of duty as UNICEF representative in Burundi. That was August 2020. So uh, a great man with diverse uh, experience, Mr. Hopkins is. And definitely Egypt uh, is another major stop uh, in uh, this distinctive uh, career. When they told you, Mr. Hopkins, that uh, you've been assigned as U U UNICEF's representative in Egypt, um, I mean, uh, how about that impact? I know that always Egypt has a special place in uh, ambassadors and uh, foreign representatives' hearts. Well, it was, uh, it was delightful news, and I should say, actually, I, I chose to come to Egypt, but you can't always be lucky enough to go where you choose, but in this case, I was. So I was really delighted to, to hear that I'd be coming to Egypt. And you know, uh, sort of personally, I mean, it's just a pleasure to be in Egypt. But professionally also, it's very exciting because, uh, you know, that this, re this country has 40% uh, of the region's children. So I mean, the stakes are enormous uh, in, a good, in a good way. And what we do in Egypt has the, has a, has the potential to, to have drastic uh, impact and change on children's lives. Definitely, and uh, we're working together towards those goals. Well, UNICEF's work, uh, both globally and uh, in Egypt, has been enormous. And uh, uh, though we had the fight with COVID-19, however, uh, the sense of development and working hands in hands uh, continues. It certainly does. I mean, we, you know, we're here to support the government in its uh, obligations to children, if you like. Uh, we are the, the a source of expertise and a source of um, good international good practice and we work with the government to fulfill its commitments to the Convention of the Rights of the Child which they signed a while ago um, and uh, so you know we, we work closely under government leadership and advise accordingly across the sectors mm -hmm. um, and 
most recently uh, during the, this, uh, this pandemic, which is still continues, I should say. Mm -hmm. uh, it's been very challenging, but we've, uh, we've worked closely with our di the different ministries with whom we work uh, to, uh, to advise, to, to provide support where we can and to respond to requests for support where we can. Yes, uh, definitely. Well, uh, the whole world was brought to a standstill during uh, COVID-19. However, uh, UNICEF had responded professionally to this pandemic. So if you would kindly highlight the measures that has been undertaken in order uh, to fight uh, the pandemic and at the same time to continue working because mm. the life goes on. It certainly mm. does, yes. Yeah. So mm. the, at the onset of the pandemic, I think the whole world was reeling a little bit. And so we stepped in where we could with some very specific um, uh, supplies. For example, we provide about six million pieces of protective equipment for the Ministry of Health to use. We, we stepped in with some uh, emergency funding that we could find here and there. Um, as things have settled down, we, we, are, we are sort of going to our normative role, which in the pandemic is twofold with, with the Ministry of Health. And one is uh, providing support on logistics and cold chain, which means the, the vaccine uh, cold chain, so that vaccines are kept cold until they need to be used. And the other piece is the behavior change. As you know, a lot of the response to the pandemic has been to try to persuade Egyptians to behave in a way that will keep them safe. Uh, mask, distance, hand washing essentially. And now of course there is a whole behavior change piece around the vaccine acceptance. So that's another uh, area where we're working close with the Ministry of Health. That's but great. then we have the other parts of the, uh, of the impact which has largely been uh, around education. Of course we well know that the challenges all over the world were how do we keep children learning during the pandemic, during this period when schools were closed? So we've been accompanying the ministry to provide expertise where we can, support where we can, to make sure that uh, the most vulnerable children continue learning uh, from home during the pandemic and uh, back at school as soon as it was safe uh, and the government deemed it safe for children to come back to school. Yes. Uh, Mr. Hopkins talking about uh, the children's well-being and also uh, when it comes to social inclusion, we find that uh, UNICEF is definitely exerting effort in that respect. Yes, we are. And actually, mm. it's interesting you should ask that because this week, uh, last week, we've launched a campaign on social inclusion. And here we're looking at any child um, who for some reason might be potentially excluded. So we have children from very rural areas, we have children from very poor families, we have children who are migrants, children who are refugees, children who are disabled. Um, the, the, I think there's a, there's a huge piece of work to be done to work with the mainstream to include people who are less fortunate for whatever reason than ourselves. So we've been doing a lot of communication work, we also do a lot of um, program work around that. So we work in, again in the education system to include disabled children for example and we train the teachers and the school management on how to do that in an appropriate way. And we ensure that any programs we do offer will be either targeting directly or, or we make sure that any uh, vulnerable or marginalized excluded children can access. And I should say we've had um, uh, excellent support from our Goodwill Ambassador Munazaki, uh, who's been uh, very helpful in helping us promote these messages mm -hmm. and she's actually contributed in a, in a big way to that campaign. Yeah, I was just uh, to ask concerning the choice of uh, UNICEF's ambassadors and how far uh, is their con contribution fruitful in carrying out the message uh, to the viewers and the public? So uh, enormous actually because mm. um, I mean we do, UNICEF we do work around if you like programmatic substantive work that we do with the different ministries with whom we work but then there are a lot as I mentioned is around behavior change and if we can get champions to fly the flag for certain behaviors like you know bring your child to be vaccinated make sure your girl stays in mm -hmm. school or make sure you enroll in school at the right age or please do not bully other children uh, or let's include the most uh, vulnerable children if we get known characters doing that uh, known champions from within Egyptian society such as our goodwill ambassadors I think the message carries much further. Uh, definitely it is and uh, here is the latest message on behalf of UNICEF and uh, let's watch together we'll be back discussing further more concerning uh, the uh, targets and the objectives of UNICEF and uh, we're really honored to have uh, with us uh, on the first exclusive uh, with uh, the Egyptian television and with Night TV International, Mr. Jeremy Hopkins, UNICEF's representative in Egypt. شغفنا الحته اللي بنلاقي فيها نفسنا حلمنا اللي بيسبق خطواتنا وخيالنا اللي ورانا مستقبلنا 
اللحظات الصعبة اللي بتزعلنا من الدنيا كلها والناس اللي بتسهلها علينا الخوف من حاجات صغيرة فكرتنا بذكريات قليمة وحركات بسيطة رسمت في قلوبنا سعادة كبيرة شكت الدبوس اللي ما حدش فلت منها الفخر بإنجازاتنا الصغيرة إحساس الأمان اللي بيجي مع فتحة الباب والفرحة اللي حسستنا إن العالم كله لينا تفاصيل قصصنا كتير وإحساسنا بيها بيوحدنا بصوا حواليكم هتلاقونا بنتقابل في نفس الضحكة ونفس الألم مهم نعرف أولادنا أننا مختلفين لكن اختلافنا مش بيفرقنا UNICEF believes all children have a right to survive, thrive, and definitely fulfill their potential to the benefit of a better world. So those are considered to be milestones for UNICEF representatives all over the world. They certainly are. They are actually the principles by which we stand. Um, so we have a country program of, of cooperation with the, with the Egyptian government where we basically uh, work through how we can achieve those objectives together with the Egyptian government and be sure that we're aligned with the 2030 vision of the Egyptian government and the sustainable development goals. So we've, uh, we've got uh, five-year uh, programs that go through uh, its cycle and we're coming towards the end of our current program cycle and therefore into the design of the next one, which is of offers us great opportunity to look again, see what the situation is, assess. what are the latest challenges, assess the, analyze, and then decide how we nuance, how we tweak always under the leadership of our line ministries mm -hmm. um, and then of course in partnership with other actors in civil society. Yes, in partnership with other actors of civil society, we'd like to know more the sense of cooperation uh, between UNICEF and the civil society organizations in order to achieve targets. Uh, plus of course uh, if you would uh, kindly highlight more uh, of the pillars of the new one, then that would be great to, to, to make our audience would share with us the new plan of action. So I, I we don't yet have the new plan of action. We're just starting its design uh, now. But I'll tell you the, one. I'll mm -hmm. tell you one sort of insight, which is going to be a little uh, different from the previous program, and that is our work around young people. So mm -hmm. it's becoming patently clear that Egypt has achieved an awful lot for uh, the first decade, what we call the the, the first decade of, of life. So uh, primary school age children, primary health mm -hmm. protection services for for younger children. Where I think there's a lot of work still to do is with the adolescents and the, and the, and the, the youths. Youth. Yes. And so, you know, if you look at what young people want they, want, they want to be accompanied on their transition from learning to earning. And, you know, UNICEF has a mandate up until 18, and we want to make sure that children are as best prepared as possible to enter adulthood. Uh, and that can be with entrepreneurship skills, it can be with uh, life skills, and it can be with employability skills. And it, it requires, of course, many other actors from the UN, and of course it requires the leadership of government and many, many different ministries to make that work. But that's going to be a, a, a bigger emphasis in our new country program. And it, in, in terms of the question around civil society, you know, we, we, we firmly believe that uh, our program here, and in any country that where UNICEF works, is led by government, but there is always a place for civil society organizations. They are often the, the closest to the community. They're able to have those frank conversations around behavioral issues, behavior change issues that we talked about earlier. So we work with many different civil society organizations, some of which are better known, Al-Ashar, the Coptic Church, yes. others of which are international NGOs, some of them are local NGOs providing services through the Ministry of Social Solidarity, who we rely on enormously to deliver our program. So there's a whole range of actors, and, and we, we, we work with them all. That, that's great news, and I'm really glad that you mentioned the youth because, uh, as you know, uh, President Abdel Fattah Sisi invests in Egypt's youth. We launched here in Egypt uh, the World Youth Forum and uh, the National Youth Conference, which is definitely uh, having a great impact on youth's life because uh, they really felt that they are listened to. Listening to the youth is very important. With UNICEF, it's listening and, uh, like, uh, as you've said, uh, helping and training them, learning until the, you'll be able to be earning, exactly. which, is, uh, yeah. which is definitely a plus. Um, tell me more about accepting the other and social cohesion, because you've been working on that. Some of your words is crucial to teach our children the values of acceptance and empathy. Yes, indeed. And, you know, children um are, are vulnerable to start with and mm -hmm. children who come from a socially marginalized group are extra vulnerable. Uh, what we um, 
what we work on is either in the classroom environment or outside the classroom environment, we work on building those skills at a very early age mm -hmm. to allow children to think, what, was, what would I do if I was in his shoes or her shoes? How might she or he be feeling? How can I behave, you know, like a friendly, inclusive uh, person in, in, in my environment? Yes. Uh, now, we, we, have a, we have some data, for example, that shows that um, amongst the migrants and refugee communities, they've been much harder hit during the corona pandemic. Their mm -hmm. earnings have reduced much more drastically. Their learning has reduced much more drastically. So that calls for us to place even greater emphasis on getting them included back into the mitigation programs that the government is, is putting in place. Mm -hmm. And I must say, I, I have to say that uh, Egypt is, uh, uh, should be lauded for its inclusive approach. Um, it really, the Ministry of Health, for example, has made very clear that the vaccination rollout against the COVID, uh, against COVID-19 is available for every person in Egypt, regardless of nationality or legal status. That's impressive. Mm -hmm. uh, and that really is the right approach, and we encourage that across all programming areas. Right. Uh, well, uh, it's always great to, to have a sense of recognition. And uh, recognition, you know, is always giving us a boost forward. Uh, I heard that there has been a recognition and award for, uh, for UNICEF Egypt from His Excellency Dr. Ashraf Subhi, Egypt's uh, Minister of Youth and Sports, about uh, the sense of cooperation. And sports is very important for development. Uh, also, um, Mr. Jeremy, you've been uh, meeting with other officials like Dr. Tariq Shaoui, His Excellency, the Minister of Education, uh, talking uh, local education group that is co-chaired by UNICEF discussing the global partnership for education to ensure learning and uh, the developmental skills that we are talking about. So uh, those meetings are very important, seeing eye to eye for the future. They are, they are. And I think um, I, I've also been very pleased, I'm relatively new in Egypt, but I've been very pleased with the warm welcome that the Egyptian government has shown us and the different ministries with whom we uh, work have shown me personally. So I've. I have met um, uh, His Excellency the Minister of Education, His Excellency the Minister of Youth and Sports, and uh, his, Her Excellency the Minister of uh, Health, Minister of uh, Social Aid. Solidarity, yeah. mm -hmm. um, Minister of Planning, Minister of International Cooperation, and of course we work closely with the National Council for uh, Motherhood and Childhood, Dr. Sahar Sambati, um, and National Council for Women. So there's a whole um, uh, variety of um, very senior government officials with whom I meet, and it's an opportunity to make sure we do see eye to eye to make sure that we are responding to uh, what is required of us and that we're doing so uh, uh, correctly so the, the the example you just cited um, Egypt has become a member of the global partnership for education that's a great uh, achievement in and of itself and the Minister of Education has asked us to accompany them with the coordination work that is required to, mm -hmm. for that partnership and it's a great opportunity to bring partners together around a sectoral plan for education um, Minister of Youth and Sports, uh, yes, he did. I was delighted to be honoured last week uh, for our role in promoting sports for development and for promoting young people and young people's issues. Um, and uh, it's a great opportunity also to, to have a conversation um, about what we are doing, what we want to do and how we can support the government in doing so. Uh, well, that's great news and uh, we are always uh, shining together, as, uh, as they say, and the sky is always the limit. I thank you very much, uh, Mr. Jeremy Hopkins, UNICEF's representative in Egypt. Uh, thank you for coming to Nile TV Studios for the first exclusive here uh, on Nile TV International. We're really honoured and I wish you the best of success on your mission. Dr. Tahri, thank you very much. Thank you. And th I thank you, dear viewers, for joining us. That was uh, His Excellency, Mr. Jeremy Hopkins, UNICEF's representative in Egypt. And uh, we will be back again on another exclusive and another top-notch.